హలో సుస్వాగతం 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 ఈరోజు గణతంత్ర దిన్ ఉత్సవ్ కి స్వాగతం భారత్ వర్ష కి పంచాత్తరవి వర్షగాట్ కి అమృత్ మహోత్సవ్ త్రహత్తరవి గణతంత్ర దిన్ సమారోహ మే సభీ ఉపస్థిత గణమాన్య హార్దిక స్వాగత కర్తి ఇస్ పావన్ అవసర కే మహోత్సవ్ ఉపస్థిత హమారే కార్యకారి నిదేశక సర్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డాక్టర్ వికాస్ భాటియా సర్ సారే అధిష్ఠాత ఉప నిదేశక ప్రశాసన్ కండల్ ఎస్పి అనంత రావు సర్ సభీ గణమాన్యం మే స్టేజ్ పర ఆనే ఆమంత్రిత కర్తి కార్యకారి నిదేశక హమారే ప్రేరణాస్థాన్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డాక్టర్ వికాస్ భాటియా సర్ హే సర్ ని అభీ అభీ కరోనా కో మాత్ దే శిఖస్ దే సబ్స్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ మే సహభాగ్ ఆనంద విగుణిత ధన్యవాద సర్ ఆ స్వాగత హమారే సర్ హే అధిష్ఠాత శైక్షిక విభాగ ప్రొఫెసర్ డాక్టర్ రాహుల్ నారాయణ సర్ పరీక్షా విభాగ అధిష్ఠాత నితిన్ జాన్ సర్ సంశోధన విభాగ అధిష్ఠాత డాక్టర్ సంగీత మేడం ఆన్లైన్ మాధ్యమ హమారి ప్రాధ్యాపక వృంద ప్రియ ఛాత్ర జాయిన్ హే ఉన్ సభీ కా మే ఇస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ మే స్వాగత కర్తి యహా ఉపస్థిత సర్వ కర్మచారి బంధు భగిని సభీ ఇన్స్ విభి నగర్ పర్వా కే సదస్సు కా ఇస్ అమృత్ మహోత్సవ మే స్వాగత హర సాల్ ఛబ్బీస్ జనవరి కే హమ గణతంత్ర దివస్ బడే హీ గౌరవ ఉత్సాహ మనాతే హే ఇస్ దిన్ ఉన్నీస్ సో పచాసీ మే భారతీయ సంవిధాన లాగూ హుత జిస్కీ రచన ఆదరణీయ బోధిసత్వ డాక్టర్ అంబేడ్కర్ జీ నే కీ థీ ఆజ్ ఇసీ సంవిధాన కి వజా హమారా దేశ ఎక్ సంపూర్ణ గణతంత్ర దేశ హక్ లోకతాంత్రిక దేశ మే రహనా హమ సబ్బ గౌరవ కీ బాత హై గణతంత్ర దివస్ హర సాల్ హమ సభీ భారతీయ మే హర్ష ఉల్లాస ఓ నయ సోచ కా సంచారణ కర్తా హై ఇసీ నయ సోచ ఆగే బడాతి హమారే ఆదరణీయ కార్యకారి నిదేశక సర్ డాక్టర్ ప్రొఫెసర్ వికాస్ భాటియా సర్ మే అనురోధ కర్తి కి సబ్బు సంబోధిత కర ఫ్యాకల్టీ మెంబర్స్ స్టాఫ్ అండ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ కన్వే మై గుడ్ విషెస్ అండ్ కంగ్రాచులేషన్స్ ఆన్ ది సెవెంటీ సెవెంటీ థర్డ్ రిపబ్లిక్ డే సెలబ్రేషన్స్ ఫర్ విచ్ వీ ఆల్ హ్యావ్ అసెంబల్ టుడే this is a very auspicious day for all indians all over the world wherever 
we are in any part of the world, we feel and we take pride in that. This is a very special year because we, are, we have enter, entered into the 75th year of our independence. You all are aware that Government of India is celebrating this year as a very special year because we are now into the 75th year and the 73rd Republic Day we are celebrating today. On this day we remember our great forefathers, our leaders, our freedom fighters who has given us a free India, who has given us the constitution where we call ourselves as a republic. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in 1950 on this day, this constitution of India was adopted and we became a sovereign democratic republic. What does it mean? It means that the people of this country, the public, the citizens of this country, they have the power to decide about the government. The power lies in the hands of the people. This is what we, this is the spirit, this is the essence and this is the feeling and this is the constitution. On 23rd of uh, January, now, the few days back, we also celebrated 125th birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, 125 years of his birth. And it has been informed that the Republic Day celebrations will begin from 23rd January. We we'll celebrate on 26th January and on 30th January when Mahatma Gandhi's death anniversary is there and we remember our father of the nation. So this, this is the spirit, this is the time we, we remember our leaders, our freedom fighters. This is important because the generations who are coming, who have born in free India, they are not aware until they are they go through the history or they see certain movies or they are being told by the historians that what has happened before 1947 and how we became a free nation. We are going through a very challenging time in fact, the whole world, when we say the pandemic, it, by definition it means the entire world, beyond the continents. In fact, every continent and almost every country in this world is affected by the pandemic COVID-19. We are now been facing this for the last two years. A lot of lives have been lost. We are into the third wave right now. The peak of the COVID possibly in, at least in Hyderabad and in this region we are observing. It's really sad that a lot of our friends, security colleagues, nursing officers and our staff, they themselves are suffering from COVID. Every day I read and I go through the reports which are released by our institution regarding the positivity rate and the people who are becoming positive. It really make us make me painful. I get a feeling that you know despite all the best of our effort, the Omicron is so infectious that it is extremely difficult to stop. We may call it mild and now that I have gone through this phase, and uh, uh, but it definitely drains out your energy. What I hope and I urge and I 
request all all of you each of my friends each of the my students and everybody in the neighborhood and anyone who is listening to me at this time please see that you take all precautions at times we become very complacent we start ignoring that it is mild and nothing will happen but what i have been telling for last couple of weeks is the nature of the disease might be mild but its impact is not mild it is very heavy when we can see that a large section of our our cohort of the medical staff of doctors and nurses and technicians and paramedics and staff they themselves are suffering and they are at home isolation so it's a challenge it becomes a bigger challenge that how we provide the health care to the people now so please take all precautions yesterday i listened to honorable president of india he has also emphasized and emphasized a lot to please take all appropriate covid appropriate precautions see that you keep on teaching continue to fight against this war which is going on for last two years in this covid time we made a good progress as far as strengthening and providing of the services are concerned whether it is a vaccination or it is the rt pcr testing or even if it is now the omicron detection or preparing ourselves and be ready with the 100 bedded ward and uh, 20 plus 10 icu beds in addition to the good laboratories and radiological uh, backup we are prepared we are very well prepared to face this and in case it is required we will be able to serve the people of telangana so that they don't have to go here and there fortunately so far the omicron has not been so damaging as we have observed in different parts of the world and also in india and in certain places there is a decline yet we being a very large country this will keep on spreading from big metro cities to the capitals to the smaller cities and towns and then small towns and villages and countryside so this will continue for some more time we hope there is no more mutations we hope the omicron dies in due course of its time and we are able to live happily again when this covid is on at the same time we are also finding that all other non covid services also get affected we haven't stopped serving the people we can we are continuing with our opds and operation theaters and also with the other indoor services and also the lab facilities we are continuing with our teaching and training programs yet we find that the desired level of the non covid facilities in many other parts of the country and the world is affected when we look at the national health scenario today we find that the fully immunization coverage in the country is very high when we talk about the children that's nearly 76% at the same time we find that the good progress has been made in the recent years as far as the neonatal mortality rate is concerned which has come down to 25 or infant mortality rate which has come down to 35 and under 5 mortality which has come down to 41 so these are some of the recent progress which have been reported under the uh, nfhs 5 surveys studies and we find that the infant mortality rate while i was working in unicef and or was in uttar pradesh i remember some of the districts where even the imr was more than 110 possibly one of the worst district in the country today we this is the national average of 
Yet there is a lot of work which is to be done. No child, no infant, no neonate should die for the preventable cause of a disease. It is also very heartening that uh, a couple of years back, or you say a decade back, 15 years back, the women, pregnant women, would deliver at home. Majority of them would deliver at home. And there were no skilled staff, health workers, who would be available at the time of delivery. And a lot of women, pregnant women, would die because of the, you know, at the at labor or while delivering a baby or a child. Now, that's not acceptable. For a natural process, why should a mother die? We are pleased at the with a lot of efforts by government, a lot of support from the government, funds going in this, into this direction. The institutional deliveries now are close to 90%. That's really remarkable for our country. At the same time, we have a very big challenging situation where we have not been able to find good results when we talk about the nutritional programs. One third of our under five children are still malnourished, underweight, more than half the population of children and pregnant women and other women, they are suffering from anemia. We have an anemia of Bharat program, yet a large section of the population is weak and anemic. At the same time, when we have the infections, communicable diseases still striking and damaging us, there is emergence of diseases like diabetes mellitus and hypertension, which is also rising a lot. 15% of our adult population is suffering from the diabetes mellitus and 23% population is suffering from hypertension. Why am I I'm highlighting these things? When we built up this hospital, when this hospital is fully functional with 750 beds, or for that matter, any other hospital or any other inns in the country, we find that I always tell that, are we going to admit the patients who suffer from the complications of hypertension and diabetes and we treat them? Or we do something that we are able to manage different diseases, other diseases, which are not because of the complications of these two diseases. Our wards were full of diarrhea and uh, pneumonias. They, were the, they are the killer diseases. Will our future hospital beds will be occupied by the complications emerging as a result of diabetes, blindness, retinopathy, strokes, paralysis. So are we going to have our nephropathies? So all are we going to manage these diseases? What is to be done now? What can be done? It's our responsibility. We will overcome COVID in due course of time. But we have to see that the diseases which are always endemic, these diseases which I just mentioned, they're always with us. We live with that. We are learning to live with COVID. We have been learning with this. Now, but we learn to live with these diseases, but we need to learn also, and also need to teach the people and the communities that how we have to change our lifestyles, how we have to think again that these diseases, they do not kill people of our country and make them. If you are healthy, we are healthy, we have a lot of energy. If we are sick, we are suffering from some diseases, the lot of energy is drained out and we, we don't, don't feel that, you know, spirit, we don't feel that energy in ourselves. When we talk about a good health system in the country, where our fellow citizens, so we all live with good health and happiness and fitness, I always tell, and we have on our website as well, on the very, on the top of the website, along with the aims within our happiness and fitness. It means we all want to be happy, we all want to be fit. When we want all, each one of us, everyone, we have to talk about the equity. There's a lot of inequities in the country. 
these inequalities can be because of the gender, the women suffer more, or it can be because of the age, the old people suffer more, or it can be because of the reasons, maybe the slums and the rural people, they, their health status is not good, or it could be because of the inaccessible and difficult terrains which are existing and where the health system doesn't reach, or it can be because of certain communities and underprivileged and poor socioeconomic groups where our health system doesn't reach to the adequate levels. There are many reasons, there are many factors, but what we need, India as a whole, India as a nation, we want to make it a developed nation. We have to see that each one of our citizens, each one of us has equal rights, equal opportunities to survive, equal opportunities to live, equal opportunities for education and health care. I studied in uh, Willis, Rural Medical College, Sevagram. We talked about Mahatma Gandhi's vision of rural India. We think about model village. What should be there in a village? Every village should have access to good nutrition, education for girls and boys, for children. There should be health facility near in the neighborhood or if it's a big village within the village. There should be electricity, there should be water, there should be sanitation and a good, happy working arrangement and people are able to live happily with good per capita income for each household. We have seen a lot of uh, progress in terms of the electricity available in, in the country, nearly 96%, 98%, 97% or drinking water facility in about 96% and sanitation has also improved to more than 70%. So these have reached to the villages. These facilities have reached. Health is also reaching now. There is a lot of scope, there is a lot of work to be done for each of the villages, for each of the area and the reason to be having access to all these facilities so that we can say as a whole that every part of the country and every citizen of this country is happily living. We are here in Ames to build up a new institution. We started with few people. As the family grows, the aspirations and the desires of individuals also grow. Expectations and aspirations for the people also keep on rising. We have to move along with those aspirations of the people and see that we also make a fast and rapid growth. At times while working, we find that there are a lot of challenges which take place. We need to see that we do not think about our individual and personal gains. We think about our, our institution to grow. Our goal of the institution should be on the top of our mind and our actions. As if we make a good institution, a good a hospital, a good institution for the academics, definitely we make good contribution in development of the nation. Our mandate is that if we are able to make a good institution in the country, that is what we have contributed in development of our nation. So each one of us see that we don't fight with each other, we cooperate with each other, we support each other, each other, and there cannot be any other better situation than understanding and going through the COVID era when we know that if our, one of our friends or colleagues is suffering, so many friends and colleagues, they come forward to help you. And I want to thank all my friends and colleagues who also helped me in this last seven days of a difficult time without, without having the fear of themselves getting affected. And I know some of them are suffering now while serving and extending the attention to, to me and other people in the, in the hospital. So I thank you all for uh, being uh, humane, being so noble and kind and cooperating and coordinating with each other. Before I conclude, I once again 
remind you one sacrament which I told when I came here, just to remind each one of you, and that is the be wise. Those who have come and joined later on, just to remind you that when I say be wise, I say be means together, be together, be work as a team, team spirit. That's the B. E is the energy. Always emphasize positive energy. You think positive, positive will happen. Think negative, negative will happen. Spend your efficiency, you, uh, spend your energy, which is positive in action. W stands for work hard. There is no alternative, there is no option than doing hard work that will always be your strength. And I means integrity with honesty and commitment in terms of your commitment to the institute and to the nation and to yourself. That's extremely important. As I say is always feel happy about it, doing it. There should be a smile on your face and you always feel good about it doing. Feel when you are satisfied Happiness will emerge from within. It will reflect on your face and stay fit. And finally, E stands for efficiency. To see that the work is done with, in a time-bound manner, is result-oriented. That reflects the efficiency. This is what I say, be wise. This is the mantra which I, I try, I follow, and I request all of you that please see that these are the basic which each one of us should follow in our life in addition to what else you want to do in, in, in achieving and being successful and making of this institution. I once again congratulate all of you on 73rd Republic Day with this hope and desire and wish that we will work together as one team of aims Divinagar and see that we have a wonderful happy future for all of us, for us, each one of us and also for everybody around us. With these words I once again convey my thanks to all of you for coming here. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your always inspiring words. We all the members of Ames BB Nagar family on this occasion promise you that we'll behave like the responsible citizens of the country and responsible members of the institute contributing in building of this institute and hence the building of the nation as a team where together everyone tries to achieve more cordial and happy environment because we have the motto of good health and happiness as you always said sir. sir और पिछले कई हफ्ते एम्स परिवार के सभी सदस्य आपकी सेहत के लिए प्रार्थना कर रहे थे तो इस अवसर पर हम आपकी सुखद सफर मंगलमय जीवन और लंबी आयु की कामना करते हैं आपका शुभ मार्गदर्शन आशीष हमेशा एम्स परिवार के सदस्य के साथ रहे कार्यक्रम में आगे बढ़ते हुए सभी सदस्यों यह कहा जाता है कि प्रेरणा और प्रोत्साहन यह दो चंद शब्द है जो इंसान का पूरा जीवन बदल सकते हैं आज हम इस अमृत महोत्सव समारोह में ऐसे ही कुछ परिवार के सदस्य को सम्मानित करना चाहते हैं सो so, इस कार्यक्रम के लिए मैं अपने कार्यकारी निदेशक महोदय डॉक्टर विकास भाटिया सर से अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वो कुछ सम्मान प्रदान करें तो प्रथम हाउस कीपिंग कैटेगरी में मेल सम्मान जाता है ई बालराज को सभी अधिष्ठाता और उपनिदेशक सर अन्य मानगणों को मैं विनती करती हूँ कि वो इस प्रोग्राम में हमारे साथ जुटे रहें बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं इन हाउस कीपिंग कैटेगरी फीमेल सम्मान जाता है एम पावनी
ये सम्मान इनकी निष्ठा और अपने संस्था के समर्पित ड्यूटीज को संकेत देता है बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं पावनी इन सिक्योरिटी कैटेगरी में ये सम्मान जाता है डी बालराजू को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं डी बालराजू इन सिक्योरिटी सेक्शन फीमेल ये सम्मान जाता है हम सब की फेवरेट पी कल्पना को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं पी कल्पना इसी के साथ गौरव प्रदान समारोह समाप्त तो होता है मैं अधिष्ठाता एवं अन्य मानगणों के लिए का इन इसके लिए धन्यवाद करता हूँ अपने अगले प्रोग्राम सांस्कृतिक कार्यक्रम के लिए 